Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. I right, welcome to the video. So, I saw online that it is Michael Turner's 50th birthday. And although I wasn't planning on doing a video today, I thought it would be nice to check out some Michael Turner art and sort of remember him. It's uh, very, very sad that he passed away at such a young age. And he really was an amazing comic book artist from what I've heard, he was a very, very nice guy, very encouraging, um, helped a lot of artists sort of refine their work, and um, yeah, we lost him way, way, way too soon. It's really kind of unbelievable. Um, but all right, so let's enjoy this book. This is called Michael Turner's Art Edition. So they have this series of books called Art Editions. They're very, very cool. Um, and this is The Best of Michael Turner, number one, featuring Fathom, Soulfire, and Ecos. Um, and these are like artist editions in a way. Um, they're, they're shot from the original art, and um, although it's not like the art board, this is. You can see this is actually a scan of the art board. But as we get into it, um, they look like the black and white files that you would maybe color off of. But um, anyway, let's uh, let's get into this. I'm not going to go into full, full screen mode, but we'll we'll zoom in and like we can check out the stuff so i own i have it right here too uh superman batman michael turner the graffiti um it's shot from his pencils book it's great i would highly highly recommend it um it's probably sits somewhere between 80 and 120 bucks um but it's huge it's the size of original art and it's all pencils and it's so good it's so detailed and so kick-ass looking but uh this is great i was actually i just did a video for patreon and i was talking about that um you know right now i'm working on the full-size boards and laying stuff out on the full-size boards and and here we've got a guy that 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 did that you can see the underdrawing him working stuff out on this paper and uh it's exciting, and I think you get a really good result from it. So, I'm I'm excited to try it. So this is gonna be very very cool to see. So this is a little intro page. Yeah, I never I never got to meet Mike really, uh, other than maybe briefly at like a a con party. But I don't remember ever talking to him or anything like that. So unfortunately, I don't really have any Michael Turner stories or anything to share, you know. He never came to Wildstorm as far as I know and visited. Um, I, I've never been to Top Cow or, or Aspen. So um, unfortunately, I, all I can do is give you a fan's perspective. So anyway, but you can still see the, the underdrawing in this thing, which is, again, it's very, very cool. The guy's his pencils are just so badass looking um you know he really captures like that mark Silvestri kind of grit um but uh you know kind of he made it like like uh, a little more contemporary a little more pretty at times and i mean you could definitely see that um Silvestri was was definitely influenced by turner um so it was interesting to see the you know student become a master and then the master you know his you know tutor mentor whatever you want to call it actually uh, you know sort of being inspired by what um mike had done um j scott campbell and jim lee had a moment like that too it was right around the same time funny enough i mean it was interesting because i always will generally drift sort of into a j scott campbell thing um uh, because I shared an office with Jeff while Michael and Jeff were probably the two biggest comic book artists in comics. It was real fascinating. Um, they had this kind of like friendly competition where, I mean, I'm sure both of them were, were kind of keeping an eye on the other one. And I remember, you know, you would get like previews magazine and there'd be some, uh, like a solicitation for like some book. And then Michael Turner had done the cover. And I could always see that that kind of inspired Jeff to like really, you know, dig in and, uh, you know, try hard on his next cover. Yeah, so these are bitmap files, or, or these look like these files had been prepared for um, color. So um, these aren't technically artist edition scans on the inside of this, but this is what the art looks like um, when you they when the colorist gets ready to um, color. You remove all the gray, and you just want hold on. Man, this shit is so cool. 
it's really, really neat. I'm excited. I'm really pumped. We'll just shut this because I'm going to keep seeing this. I thought this was a really nice drawing. I love the grit in Mike's stuff. Like his ones, this is Jonathan Sabal did the inks, I believe, on this first story. Um, but even the inks have a little bit of a gritty vibe, but it looks very, very cool. Yeah, it's interesting how he's drawing the anatomy here on the um, the deltoid, actually. It's a little different than I handle it, but I kind of like like uh, the, the shape that he's using. But I've seen, I've already spotted it a couple of times on his drawings, and I was like, hmm, interesting. But that's the way that, that uh, comics is, you know. As long as you're doing something and it looks good and it's pretty consistent in your style, really, not I wouldn't say anything goes. A lot goes. <laughs> you know, if you look at old, um, <coughs> like going way back, I mean, they weren't even really drawing anatomy. It was like just sort of like like things like shapes that it's like this is the shoulder shape this is the arm shape this is the bicep shape they were kind of there but you know wasn't like bridgman or that kind of thing comics got crazy i i always kind of laugh and and it's like the more psycho the art was that was kind of what i was into but it sets a weird precedent in your mind in terms of like what detail is and what detail like what's a lack of detail Luckily, as I went along, I kind of got into some other stuff, so it's like I was able to blend the two. But this this stuff isn't overly dense. I think it reads clear, and in fact, I actually like when when um, detailed artists um, get like quote unquote like lazy with things and like this white background. It just gives you an opportunity for your eye to rest. Like this too, I think it actually looks really good. This is cute. Yeah, man, this is good shit. I, I, this is just what the doctor ordered for today. I'm actually really glad that I'm doing this video. I'll probably watch it back a couple of times myself today while I'm working. This is nice. His eyebrows are crazy. I'm assuming he's like he's some. I don't know the story real well, but uh, his eyebrows are nuts. This is cool. Man. Yes, yeah, this is really interesting. Sabal's got a very organic line. This almost, to me, in some ways, looks like it was shot from pencil. There was an ink credit, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not seeing anything that's screaming like inking tools. Like, even this stuff could just be pencil, type pencil. But again, I'm just, I'm guessing, I don't know. It's tough too because of the bitmap file. It really, really hides. Um, this is interesting. He does this stuff so good. Like like the water on the boat and, and like these boats getting sucked in with it. It's really, really nicely done. Like, look at that. It's like Barry Windsor Smith shit. Yeah, it's really, really good. I always found it incredible, and I mean, this is coming from someone who broke in at a young age, um, how talented these artists were at such a young age. I mean, it just never... I, even as I've been into comics as long as I have, when I look back at the age of these artists and what they were able to do in their early 20s then mike might have been a little bit older when he did these stories because this is a few years in his career but uh it still was really really impressive i mean they were really kind of super talented young artists who had, had definitely done a lot of work on their stuff learned the right things yes it's interesting i like it i like it a lot I've never seen this comic, I don't think. I don't feel like I, I don't recognize this story. It's 
That's cool. Man, really, really neat. Kerplow. Look at all those canisters stuff. My friend Joel would sometimes do background assists for Michael Turner, or did do background assists um, for Turner. So, who knows? It's possible that Joel drew those. Maybe. This looks like inks more. Pretty cool page. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it's a splash page with like stuff on it like not seven panels or nine panels some of the uh crystal planet stuff i did has been a little dense with uh panel work and uh oh well, here we go there's a lot of panels but they're never sequences like this it's not like like this is almost like seconds passing like him sinking in um my pages have been a little more um you know like people having conversations and it's three people in a room and you know you're cutting back and forth the things this wouldn't be so bad because it's really just one shot fading into this is a really nice profile yeah it's great it's cool to see where he renders on the face Black and white scans, I think, are always really helpful. Is the color can really add, like, adds a lot of detail, and sometimes it can be a little confusing to learn from. See, this is, he pulls this down real tight in here, which is, the muscle does, it attaches to the bone here, so it's pretty cool. I haven't seen a lot of people draw it exactly like this, though. It's unique to him. Lots of side views. This is three. Three, oh, well, two on this page, but a third one on the one before. Okay, so this will be Turner pencils. Well, this is going to be good. Oh, man. I'm pumped. All right, let's do this. You guys ready? His pencils. Oh, man. This is going to be awesome. Woo! Damn. Doing a little bit of thumb shading there, making the 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 face a little smoky, extra sexy. Oh, this is nice. This might have been the book. It was funny, is so. Right around this time, I think when Wizard Magazine, they had like a color preview bonus magazine or a comic. You know, they kind of came packaged with it that was like a color preview and maybe had some sketches and stuff. And I remember this because it was such a funny moment for me where um, someone showed it to me and they're like, what do you think of this? This was at Wildstorm. And uh, I said, it looks good. Like, I like it. I like the colors. And just, like, just drawings were cool. And then they said, uh, yeah, but it's not inked. And I was like, I did, wasn't even looking for that. I was just looking at, like, how nice the drawings were. So it was kind of an it was an interesting moment for me because as an inker, you would think that I would be, like, more focused on that. But really, I, I wasn't. It was just overall, did the pieces work? Were the drawings nice? And I thought I was, like, I took it almost as, like, a positive that, that uh, I was able to, you know, have a different perspective. And it wasn't so just, like, singularly focused on, like, inks. But penciling didn't come for me for a while, so that was just one of those early sort of weird moments. Another profile. I'm gonna have to start using more profiles because I I actually really enjoy drawing them, but I I don't use them a lot because uh you know I, I I worry about it in terms of a storytelling thing. Like front views and side views, I, I think can be a. Uh, I mean, they clearly work, but this is nice. Yeah, this is really cool. Ooh. Damn. And you can see all of his underdrawing in it. I love it. Uh, it's so cool. Damn. That is some cool tech.
Oh, this is the worst. I hate cleaning up the double page spread. Like when you, well, I don't know about for other people, but when I would submit stuff to a colorist, I would always go in and remove this. So you can you can do it in Photoshop, but if there's detail like this and you've inked it, then it can you have to go in between everything. Like it's kind of pain in the butt. Like speed lines and stuff like that. Like don't connect equally too sometimes. This is pretty. <coughs> excuse me. This is pretty nicely put together. Yeah, sometimes the gap can be a little funky. It may it may actually be patched together at another spot, not the center. Normally, if I scan a double page spread, I can show you like how much of it, um, like my scanner can cover. Where's it pop through this? So, like when you scan a double page spread, oops. Don't crop. All right, let me see. Uh, you get about this much of the piece. Like, with, where the ants, crawling ants are. So, that's about what your scanner will scan. Maybe a little bit less. So, you'll have two pieces that will have some redundant material. But then you, you patch it together in Photoshop or Clip Studio. Or, if you draw digitally, you don't have to deal with that. You lucky, lucky dogs. But then you don't have an original. <laughs> But you have an NFT now, see? Wow, bridge is great. Damn, dude. I wonder if Joel drew this. He was interesting. So at Wildstorm, at Wildstorm, assistants w weren't as normal as they were at Top Cow. At Top Cow, you definitely saw a trend of multiple pencilers on books. And multiple inkers and then even assistants sometimes to those people um at wildstorm although i think early on scott williams would sometimes use assistants for different things um you know past like filling in blacks i i didn't really see a lot of um group group uh efforts so it was interesting how the different studios were i don't know if extreme would do that this is nice Man, he draws good His lead appears to be around an H. It could be HB. I could be wrong, but it's, it's definitely smudgy. But it's not as dark. Like, I've been drawing with HB, and it looks about like this. It, it feels to me like it's a little bit darker. Man, those eyes are awesome. It's so good. It's tough, too, to draw, like, big... I mean, eyes aren't hard, honestly, but uh, a big shot like that. If he had to draw more of the face, too, boy, you really have to watch the um, spatial relationships of things. But this is great. This upshot's nice, too. This is good. It's got a little, like, tiny bit of a Joe Manorero vibe. I don't know the time frame of Battle Chasers um, and this, but... That's cool. It's cute. Yeah, it's nice. I like it. Hmm. Wow, this is really neat. What a nice surprise. And again, dedicated to Mike. Ooh, okay. I've seen some of this. So this is Michael Turner and Jeff Johns. This will be exciting. Ooh, I remember this character. Dude, drawing is so fun. Gosh. It's torture, but fun torture. <laughs> Finishing this stuff is what's fun. Doing it can be sort of like it sort of will test you as a human um, and your stick to itness. But boy, when something's done, ah, especially like, man, imagine penciling this and you're like, oh man, this looks so good. And you just know the colors are going to bring this thing to life like nobody's business. It's exciting. And then people are gonna read the story. It's even cooler. Love waterfalls. That's nice. Excellent, excellent page. Yeah, these are all really good. Really good. Ooh, look at that. Hmm. 
Yeah, this is interesting. <laughs> That's funny. Them running. Man, so cool looking. Well, this was so unexpected. It's really a nice treat. <laughs> you might be thinking the same thing. You're like, wow, I wasn't expecting a video from Rich today. And Mike Turner, no less. So I know he's very, very popular um, with people. And, and I, like I said, I some of the stuff I just don't feel like I've ever seen. I don't remember this. This is really cool. Yeah, it's really nice. Damn. I'm just soaking it in. Man, that's cool. I believe Aspen is doing some sort of live tribute to Mike. I think I saw it on either Twitter or Instagram, but you might want to look into it. It could be on YouTube. It might be something that they do on Instagram. I'm not 100% sure, um, but uh, that might be fun, you know. Not sure who's going to be there, but uh, God, it was so good. This stuff is very, very cool. God, look at this. This kind of has like a Brett, Brett Booth vibe. <laughs> Dude, this is such a nice spread. Wow. Damn, it's so good. Hey, if anyone knows, like, have... Is there a process for going from pencils to, to having it properly prepared for inks that you know of like online like where someone breaks down exactly the process that they use to get this to basically like you know penciled version of inks I meaning not inked but but just that you you layer you know you do like levels and stuff like that and turn it black i'd be curious of uh if anyone's ever broke down the process, like, is it channels that you use or what? Let me know. I, I would be really curious to see, um, see how it's done. Cause this looks really good. Like, I mean, honestly, like I'm looking at it going like it would look cool with inks, but it looks damn good like this too. It really does. Okay. So this is going to be soul fire issue nine, man. This is so great. A lot of characters, yo. Yeah, really, really good. Damn, it's a nice piece. Ooh, whoa. This is good. Really nice shot right here. Crazy pants. It's like Jimmy Page's pants. The dragon pants. <laughs> People that aren't in the Led Zeppelin have no idea what I'm talking about. Jimmy Page had a black dragon suit that he would wear on stage in the, like 73. For a few years he wore it. Then he got a white one. Wow, this is cool. I didn't even see that. Damn, that is awesome. Man, that is so crazy. Yeah, this is some really, really nice drawings. Do, do, do. Oh, this is a nice page. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, six panels. You know, my pages are like seven to nine panels. Stuff starts to get squished in. Six is good. I think five and six panel pages to me are like, that's where the money is. Sometimes you can go beyond that or less, but. Like I said, these don't really count because although they're panels, it's not like stuff really. This is cool. Really, really good drawing. This is nice upshot too. Actually, really, really good. He's got he's got that down, and I like how, how, that he actually covered up the eye. I think the temptation would be, you would want to show both eyes, but if you did, it would probably look like off, and you wouldn't really be able to figure out why. But even on this one, you see he covers up the eye, the nose, so it's pretty much the same shot, really. Very, very cool. The open mouth is really nicely done, too. It's so good. Really nice. These are, yeah, these are really good. This He draws this kid great. Like, he looks cool. He's, like, got a nice, pretty, like, line on it. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, man. Cool. Man, that's really nice too. Jeez. God dang. I love stuff like that. Like it just looks so like cool. It's gonna say three D, but that too, but yeah, it's just like really cool silhouette. This is all really nice too. Always room to grow, friends. No matter where you're at drawing. If you're, if you're into it, you can always improve and add little cool things to your stuff. Mike never really seemed to slow down, too. I always felt like he always was improving and and never seemed to, like, rest on sort of some fame or success. He was always still doing comic books, stories, and stuff like that where, you know, someone like him, I mean, the temptation to just do covers, um, you know, would be there because they would sell for a lot of money. You know, you could just do two or three covers a month and make more than most people make in five years. This is cool. Lots of detail in this guy's face. This too, it's like almost has like a little bit of a Lanil U vibe. When um, I inked him on uh, Silent Dragon, he would do line patterns very similar to this actually. So it's interesting. I wonder if Mike was a Lanil U fan. So Lanil was had been working at Marvel for a while too, and had done some Wolverine. Oh, these are nice. Damn. Yeah, really, really cool. There's a lot of confidence in this line. Like this looks like someone who knows what they're doing. Just has a conviction to the pencil line. It's very, very cool. God, man, Turner was so damn good. All right. We're going to wrap it up here. What can I say, man? Rest in peace, Michael Turner. Um, you are an amazing artist. Uh, I've been determined on my channel to definitely not let you be forgotten. And uh, I will continue to do Michael Turner videos. Uh, because I think, uh, you know, his legacy should live on. And he inspired so many people to draw. And, and really, like, has, has a lot of people that... Uh, their art, you know, has Michael Turner in it, so it's it's interesting. But all right, you guys have a great day. I'm gonna get to work. This was, like I said, an unexpected surprise, but I'll guarantee I'll watch this video at least two or three times today while I'm working.
repeat this stuff. It's still a lot of good good uh, vitamins for me. So it's just fun, exciting stuff. And uh, the fact that it's like in different versions of pencil and stuff like that uh, makes it makes it cool too. So again, and if you know um, the process that you would use to turn pencils to inks, um, I, I would be curious to know uh, like the different versions of it. I've, I've experimented with it because uh, I think it actually can like kind of look cool. Again, I know there's going to be knee-jerk reactions and people are going to be like, oh my god, sacrilege. This is different shit. I don't like it when you can see that the pencils were shaded in. Um, meaning like uh, if, if there is like a black area like this and they went like this it looks too much. You know, like, um, I mean, that can look cool, but uh, it's it's better to actually, like Jay Lee, like there's a lot of Jay Lee that people don't realize has never been inked. Um, I want to say Ozymandias wasn't inked, and I don't think his Batman Superman stuff was inked either, and I know that there were some people that were saying, no, no, it was inked, but if you actually look at the original art, a lot of that stuff was not inked. Um, but his wife does it. Uh, she's the colorist, and she's got some sort of process that she uses to convert his pencils, which are really beautiful, um, to to an inked look. And, and uh, I think it looks good in the comic. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day, and uh, should be back this Sunday for Super Fun Sunday. And uh, last one was really good. So, okay, talk to you later. Bye.